Greg Wilkinson. I'm a technical marketing engineer here at Cisco focusing on our UCS platform. Today I'm going to give you a brief preview of how to configure the C3260 management interfaces. So we're going to talk about three things in this video. The first thing is going to be the C3260 management architecture. I'll just give you a basic high level overview of how the management architecture is connected. Uh, the second thing will be understanding the two different NIC modes for the 3260. So we have our dedicated mode versus our Cisco card mode. And lastly, we'll go through some basic management interface configurations. Uh, this will be done via a demo. And we'll do two things. We'll start with using the default settings, which in this case are Cisco card mode with DHCP enabled. And then I'll also give you a, a custom settings demo with dedicated mode and static IPs. So we're going to talk a little bit about the C3260 management architecture. As you can see here, the C3260 can have up to two server nodes, each server node having its own baseboard management controller, or BMC. The C3260 can also have up to two system I.O. controllers, or SIOC. Now each of these SIOCs has its own dedicated chassis management controller, or CMC, along with two QSFP ports, or Cisco card ports. Um, and one dedicated RJ45 management port. Now, all four of these management controllers on the C3260, those being the two CMCs and the two BMCs, have network access. Any network configuration changes are always made on the active CMC. So as you can see there, there's one CMC that's active and one that's in standby, and that's primarily meant for failover. All of these network configuration changes um, are ensured via the management IP or VIP. So the VIP basically ensures that all traffic going through to uh, the C3260 is going through the active CMC, whichever one is active at the time. All of the management controllers have the ability to communicate with each other via the internal network setup on the system. So now I want to talk a little bit about the C3260 NIC modes. Here the NIC mode setting determines which ports can reach the Cisco IMC or Integrated Management Controller. The C3260 has two NIC modes, the first mode being dedicated mode. This mode is using the dedicated management port, the RJ45 port I showed you on the previous slide to reach the Cisco IMC. Dedicated mode supports 10100 MB as well as 1 gig speeds and also auto negotiation. The default setting here is auto negotiation enabled. The second mode is what's known as Cisco card mode. This mode is using the two Cisco card ports or QSFP ports I showed previously to reach the Cisco IMC. These ports are shared with the host as standard LOM ports. Now Cisco card mode is the default net mode and because there's two ports it supports both active active and active standby. Again this is because there's two uplink ports. Now in active active mode, all Ethernet ports operate simultaneously, so this mode provides multiple paths to the Cisco IMC. And in active standby, one port will fail over to the other. So if you have both ports plugged in and you have active standby configured, should that active port fail, uh, the standby port will now become the new active port. Now also, Cisco card mode does support both 40 gig and 4 by 10 gig speeds. The default speed is 4 by 10 gig. So now I'm going to show you how to configure the C3260 management interfaces. And this video is going to assume you have some basic knowledge of the server already and you've already taken care of, you know, plugging in power cables, plugging in the Cisco card ports, plugging in the dedicated management port if that's the mode you wish to operate in, etc. Um, also, you want to plug in a KVM dongle to the back of one of the server nodes. This has your video, your monitor, your keyboard connections. And this will just make it uh, easy for you to do all of your configuration. So assuming when all this stuff is done, you want to power on your server. And your server will start to boot. And if you are using the default settings, which as I mentioned previously are Cisco card mode and DHCP enabled, you will likely see a uh, Cisco management IP address pop up on the bottom of your screen there. And that's because, you know, this is assuming you have the... Cisco card ports connected to a DHCP switch. Um, but anyway, just as the server's booting, 
Uh, once you see the Cisco splash screen, you want to push F8, and this will take you into the Cisco IMC configuration utility. Um, and as you can see here, um, all of the default settings are displayed uh, right in front of you. So here you can see that we're in Cisco card mode. Our NIC redundancy is set to active active. DHCP is enabled and we've acquired an IP address. All right, so now that we have an IP address configured for our server, we're going to point a browser to that management IP address that you saw on the previous screen. This will bring up the Cisco Integrated Management Controller web UI. And we want to enter the default credentials here, which are admin password, because we haven't changed those yet. And once we enter those, we're going to click enter, and that's going to bring us into the integrated management controller uh, management pane. So here you can see a lot of basic information about the chassis. You can see things like health status, power state. It displays the management IP address over here, and also the IP addresses of the two chassis management controllers. So you will notice that these IP addresses were automatically assigned and that's because DHCP is enabled and the system will pick up a total of five IP addresses assuming you have both server nodes installed and both SIOC modules. So you have your management IP, then the two CMCs, and then the two BMCs. So if you click the uh, icon at the very top left over there and you go down to admin click on the networking tab and here you will actually be able to see all four of the management interfaces these are the two CMC's and the two BMC's so remember that these IP addresses were automatically assigned because we have DHCP enabled so now we have a total of five IP addresses for the chassis we have the management interface or VIP and then we have the two CMC's and the two BMC's. And again, this is the standard out-of-box configuration if you weren't to touch any of the settings. So the next configuration is a bit more involved and we're going to look at dedicated mode using static IP addresses. And to save a bit of time, I already have the server booted back into our Cisco IMC configuration utility. This is the F8 menu that we saw previously. And in order for this to work, you also have to ensure that you have a cable plugged into the dedicated management port and an IP address available. You're going to need a total of five static IPs to configure the server because as I mentioned before, there's five IP addresses in total. And the first thing we want to do here is change the NIC mode from Cisco card mode to dedicated. We then want to disable DHCP and assign a static IP address to the to the Cisco IMC. For purposes of this video, I'm using the same IP address that I had previously in the uh, DHCP example. And the last thing we want to do is change the redundancy from active active to none because now we don't have redundancy. We've only got a single management port for the chassis. So now that we've made all the necessary changes, we want to press F10 to save these settings. It takes about 45 seconds for the settings to save after which we can press F5 to refresh everything, make sure all the settings look as they should. I'm not going to demonstrate that in this video because it's pretty self-explanatory. Once we have the settings saved, we want to point a browser again to that same management IP address we just configured, log in using those default credentials of admin password because we haven't changed those yet. Once we're logged in, we again want to go to the admin networking tab and scroll down to where we see the four uh, management interfaces. We have the two CMCs and the two BMCs. Now this was a pre-recorded video here so you can see that I've already gone in and assigned IP addresses to each of these interfaces but for you guys these IP addresses will be blank. Um, again we're using static IP addresses so now we're not these are not automatically assigned via DHCP. The only IP address that's been configured was the management IP or VIP. You still need to go in here and configure these four IP addresses manually, modify any of the other network settings as you so choose, and then save these settings to complete the configuration. And just to give you guys an idea, now that you've saved your configuration, everything should work as it should. 
But had you not set IP addresses for the CMCs or the BMCs and you had only configured the VIP, uh, you really wouldn't be able to do anything with the chassis. You'd be able to point a browser to the management IP and log in, but none of the, you know, none of the uh, behavioral tasks are going to work. You're not going to be able to power on and off the server. You're not going to be able to launch KVMs. You're not going to be able to configure storage because, again, that management path hasn't been configured yet. So if you ever get into a situation where you, you know, you notice that a, a KVM isn't launching or, you know, power operations are not working or something along those lines, just be sure, first of all, that you have IP addresses for all the management interfaces to complete that path. With that, this concludes this video. Thank you guys for taking the time to watch. Hope you guys learned something new, and uh, we'll see you guys soon.